Richards. Sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailing man, the skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. The weather started getting rough, the tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the minnow would be lost. The minnow would be lost. The ship's aground on the shore of this uncharted desert isle with Gilligan, the skipper too. The millionaire and his wife. The movie star, the professor and Mary Ann here on Gilligan. <laughs> Get a look! What's the matter? I can't fall asleep with all that snoring going on. I don't hear anything. Gilligan, I want you to go back to sleep. And I want you to sleep without snoring. That is an order. Aye, aye, sir. and you were having another one of your nightmares. Oh, yeah, and it was awful. The island broke off and started to float away. And then it started to melt. And melt? Then, yeah, I'm scared, Skipper. Gilligan, your scream scared us half to death. And you ruined my dream. Paul Newman was chasing me. You could have waited till he caught me. Well, Gilligan was having another one of his nightmares. And you see, he dreamed that the island was going down into the sea. Well, let, let me tell them, up. huh? Well, but I'm a skipper. But it's my nightmare. Tell us what happened. It was awful, you see. The island broke off. And then it was just coming down. There, there's such blood-curdling screams. It made poor little Teddy's fur stand on end. Gilligan was having another one of his nightmares. Oh, how inconsiderate. Must he have nightmares at night when everyone's asleep? Uh, from now on, Gilligan, have uh, daymares. Have another nightmare, Gilligan? No, thanks. I just had one. And it was awful. You see what happened? The island broke loose and started floating away with all of us on it. And all the dirt changed the mud and we started sliding. And the sharks came through. And all the people started falling off one by one. Uh, women and children first, I, I trust. Oh, oh, scary, scary, scary. Now, please, please, it was just a dream. We've been on this island for 15 years and we're perfectly safe. I can assure you that Gilligan's dream has no significance whatsoever. Stop, 
And this metal disc you found is marvelous. Made of some strange alloy I've never seen before. But it's turned this instrument into a real honest-to-goodness barometer. Oh, no, you're not sticking anything in my mouth or any place else. <laughs> barometer, Gilligan, not thermometer. Anyway, we can finally predict the weather again, and thanks to this disc, with remarkable accuracy. That's good news. I'm going to tell the others. Now, hold on, Gilligan. Huh? According to this instrument, there's a raging storm approaching the island. That's bad. But it won't get here for a couple of days. That's good. Now, the gyrations of this needle indicate that the storm will cause a gigantic tidal wave that will completely wash over the island. That's bad. However, that wave will be so strong that it could force a boat into the shipping lane so we can finally be rescued. That's good. Only we don't have a boat. That's bad. Or is that good? I lost track. I'm afraid it's bad, Gilligan. However, there's one good part. None of the others know about this. There's one bad part. What's that? Oh, I do. Gilligan. I am relying on you to keep this between us while I try to determine a solution. There's no reason for the others to be upset. Now, mum's the word. But, Professor, I... No buts, Gilligan. Mum's the word. Now, what's the word? Mum. Mum. Hi there, Gilligan. Give me a hand with this trap, will you? Mum. Mum what? Mum's the word. About what? If I told you, it wouldn't be Mum. Well, who told you to keep it Mum? The professor. The professor? The professor told you to keep something Mum and must be serious. Is it serious? Mum. Very serious? Mum, Mum. Very, very serious? Mum, Mum, Mum. Are our lives at stake? Mum, 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 Mum. Gosh, I gotta find out about this. Remember, I didn't tell you anything. I kept it Mum. Gilligan! Gilligan, what is going on? The captain rushed past us, and he seemed terribly, terribly upset. We tried to talk to him, but he ignored us. Imagine ignoring the passengers, and he's only the crew. Well, if you know something, tell us. Say something. Oh. Mum. I'm not your mom, Gilligan. Well, I'm not your dad either, but speak up, my boy. I can't. The professor made me promise to keep it mum. Now, you don't want me to break the promise to the professor, do you? Uh, to put it in words of one syllable, a uh, yas. Well, I always say, if a secret's not worth sharing, it's not worth keeping. I don't quite know what that means, but I always say it. I'm sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Howell, my lips are sealed. Sealed lips are a child's game. Hey, now, this cash, cash, that's a man's game. Just tell us one thing, Gilligan. Is it good news or bad news? Both. Well, well tell us the good news. Bad news is for peasants. Well, it's kind of mixed up good news and bad news. We might be rescued, but there's a... Rescued! Rescued! D did you hear that, lovey? Oh, a rescue! Oh, dear. What does one wear to a rescue? Uh, perhaps something pale blue. Yes. If it's a gray ship, that should go nicely. Of course, darling, I must wear an evening dress. Well, to help us get rescued, I'd wear an evening gown myself. Uh, strapless, oh, you know what sorry. I mean? But how can that boy confuse a rescue with bad news? Rescue and bad you news. Know he's always been bad news. Rescue? Bad news? Gilligan, do you know what's going on? Mum's the word. Gilligan, I just saw the Howells, 
And they were talking about what to wear to a rescue. And something about bad news. Do you know anything about it? You do know something about it. Oh, you'd really like to tell Ginger all about it, wouldn't you? I know you would, because you always like to tell Ginger your secrets. Now be a good boy. Tell me all about it. My lips are sealed. Stealing your lips is a child's game. That's what Mr. Howell said, too. Well, unsealing them is a woman's game. Hmm? I like your game a lot better than Mr. Howell's. <laughs> now, Gilligan, what is it that you were going to tell me? Mum's the word. What does that mean? Mum means mum. talking about a rescue and bad news and Gilligan knows something and he won't tell me. Rescue? Bad news? Oh, Gilligan, you've got to tell us what you know. I can't. I promise not to say anything and for once in my life, I'm not going to. Oh, you don't have to. People who make promises should keep them. You don't have to tell us a thing. Well, thanks, Marianne. You'll never get another piece of my coconut cream pie. Mom? Or my banana cream pie. Oh, Mom. Or my pineapple cream pie. Oh, Mom, 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 Mom. Mom, Mom, Mom. But Gilligan said that our lives are at stake. Well, I missed the opening of the New York Stock Exchange. Will it be afternoon or evening? It does make a difference, you know, in what one wears. Yes. I'd rather land in L.A. It's closer to Hollywood. Gilligan said there was bad news, too. Mom, Gilligan? Why are our well, lives at stake? Why are they so All right. right. Well, well, I will tell you what I, what I know. All right. As you are aware, the radio and all the rest of my instruments haven't worked for over 10 years. But two days ago, Gilligan found this strange metal disc. And due to its incredible conductivity, I was able to fix the barometer. There's a major storm heading for the island. Oh, we've weathered a lot of storms, Professor. Ah, but this storm's magnitude has created a tsunami. Tsunami? Oh, no, a tsunami! What's a tsunami? Gilligan, that's an islander word for a tremendous tidal wave. A wave that will cover the island and sweep us all into the sea. That's what I call a real permanent wave. <laughs> you mean we'll all die? Uh, the upper class, too? Actually, this tidal wave may be our way off the island and back to civilization. I haven't worked out the details, but... Uh... I have only one thing to say, Professor. Work out the details. What is your idea, Professor? To lash all our huts together. You mean tie them together with the ropes we made of hemp? Exactly. That way we can ride out the storm no matter how severe it is. I got the idea from the South American Indians who invented the outrigger canoe. The heavy surf would always upset their canoes, but they found that by lashing three canoes together, they'd stay afloat. That's a great idea, Professor. It's just a question of having enough bottom. If that's the question, Skipper, you sure got the answer. Ooh. You mean, Professor, that you can make a seaworthy craft by lashing our huts together? Right. Well, congratulations. You invented a huts boat. A huts boat? I just coined a word. <laughs> There's been coins are beneath you. Oh, <laughs> just an expression, my dear. How much time have we got, Professor? Three, maybe four days at the most. What can we do to help? Well, we need provisions. We need more hemp for ropes. But most important, we have to find a way to move the huts together and tie them. Thurston, let them take care of the trivia. We must pack our clothes. And our money. Well. What seems to be the problem, Professor? Well, it's not fitting for some reason. <laughs> Skipper, give me a boost. I can get it. All right, little buddy. Put your right foot right in my hand and... Oh! I think you got me a little too high, Skipper. Gilligan, come down from there this minute. Look out below! Oh, good! Oh, good! Oh, good! Oh, good! Oh, good! Oh, good! Well, 
It's all set, folks. I just have to synchronize the winch to the axle, and we're ready to raise the huts. Mr. Howell, do you really think you can put the three huts together? Well, I don't know. It's not my kind of merger. Oh, I do hope there'll be first-class accommodations. On the upper deck, of course. It's too bad Charlton Heston isn't here. We could use a good old-fashioned miracle. Well, gentlemen, I think we're ready. Skipper, you're the strongest. Good luck. Good luck, Skipper. <laughs> Skipper, you're raising it. Good show, Captain. Oh, Skipper, we're all counting on you. That's my big buddy. That's it, Skipper. It's high enough. All right now, folks. We're all going to have to work together. Everybody. All right now, folks. Easy does it. We have to reposition the hut so that we can attach it to the others. Right? Right along that wall. That's it. Now, here we go. Huh? Bring it to me. A little more. A little more. Just a touch. That's it. We can let it down right here. Let me do it, huh, Professor? Gilligan, it has to be let down nice and easy. You can depend on me. Okay, Gilligan. Calculations, that tidal wave will hit within minutes. Please, Mrs. Howell, we have to bind ourselves to these poles. When that tidal wave hit, these ropes will save your life. Oh, I'm sorry, Professor, but they'll wrinkle my clothes. There must be another way. Mrs. Howell, what is more important, saving your life or wrinkling your clothes? Well... Just a moment, I'm thinking. Mrs. Howe realizes how important this is. Now, let me help you. Oh, no, no, a, a thousand times, no. In this position, I couldn't possibly reach my wallet. Hold oh, still, please, oh, Mr. Howe. Or Thank my you. credit cards. See, Skipper, I'm tying myself to the pole. That's fine, little buddy, but we've got to see to the passenger's safety first. Now, go help the girls. Aye, aye, sir. Passengers first. Hey, Ginger, let me help you. Thank you, Gilligan. Bad storm teacher. Oh, stop, Gilligan. This is no time to be modest. Well, I can't. My life is at stake. Yeah, but Ginger, you... Hmm? Just think of me as one of the boys. Oh, boy. Okay. Boy, 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 boy. Oh, boy. Now, oh. make a knot. Yeah. Here. Remember, one of the boys. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Gilligan, help me now. I can't get the ropes any higher. I know, help me help. Oh. Oh. Hurry up, I don't have much time. You tied 
Ginger? She's just one of the boys. Oh, well, think of me as your sister. Sister? That's mm. a good idea. Yeah, sister, sister, sister. Oh, brother. Nice work, little buddy. Now lash yourself to a pole. Now, I know we're going to come through this just fine. We're all together in this hut. Our provisions are lashed down in the other huts. I won't kid you. It's not going to be easy. But we'll make it. All of us. Beefy. Beefy isn't here. Thurston, we took out Beefy. Beefy? Oh, that poor little poodle. She'll never hear us over all this storm. Won't somebody please go get Beefy? Oh, Beefy. Here, Beefy, Beefy, Beefy. Here, Beefy, Beefy, Beefy. because we didn't take Beefy with us. Don't you remember? We left her at home, on the paper. We did? Fifteen years ago. Gilligan's out there, and I'm going after him. Skipper, you'll never find him in that storm. And he's my little buddy, and nothing's gonna stop him. Thank heavens the storm is over. <laughs> I think I'll take a look around and see if the island has suffered any, any, any damage. It's a trifle damp. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hey, give me your hand, Mr. Howe. <laughs> oh, darling, why didn't you swim? Oh, I can't. Remember, lovey? I had the butler take the swimming lessons for me. Oh, Professor, you were right. We're at sea. We might even be in the shipping lanes. Maybe we can be rescued. Maybe by a six-foot-four marine. You were so right, Professor. Lashing all the huts together did help us ride out the tidal wave. 
And we're all safe and sound. <laughs> Gilligan! Gilligan! Gilligan? Gilligan! 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 Anything happened to Gilligan, it's all my fault. You mustn't blame yourself, Lobby. But I sent him out to look for Fifi. Who else could I blame? Well, I don't know, but certainly not a howl. Oh, it's all my fault. I, I should have gone after my little buddy in the first place. Oh, you tried, Skipper. You tried. I'll never forget how he tied me up and saved my life. My little buddy. That brave, brave boy. Inside that skinny little lad, was a heart the size of Fort Knox. We'll never forget Gilligan. I think we should all take a few moments and remember him in our own way. I could hear my little buddy calling my name just like he was still here. Help, Professor! That's odd. Now I can hear him calling me. That's nothing odd at all. It's the dear boy reaching out to us from the great beyond. Help, Ginger! Marion! Ginger, do you believe in ghosts? No. But I believe Gilligan's haunting this hut. Help! Mr. Mrs. Howell, somebody! Somebody? How informal. That's Gilligan, and it sounds like he's just beyond that wall. Attached to us by a rope. Gilligan! Gilligan! Let's enlarge the hole and pull him in. Well, stand back, Professor. If my head made this little hole, I know how to make a great big one. <laughs> A Congressional Medal of Honor. I'll do even better. Uh, I'll buy him Congress. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all very proud of you, little buddy, but you haven't told us what happened. Well, Skipper, what happened was they were out there looking for Fifi. Like, Fifi, Fifi. This wind started coming really strong. <laughs> then the thunder, <laughs> the lightning, <laughs> and, then the, and, then the, and then the rain was coming sideways and straight. <laughs> and I was, the wind was blowing so hard it bounced me from palm tree to palm tree. <laughs> boing, boing, boing. And, then, and then I remembered Mrs. Howell didn't bring Phoebe. So I started back from the huts and I looked up and I saw this giant wave as big as a mountain. So I looked around and I grabbed this rope, see? And I lashed myself to a palm tree like this. And then I looked up and the wave was there and it came down and it was a big jerk.
him. No time to play follow the leader. There's only one thing that can save them now. A girl. A girl? Oh, Ginger, you're not thinking of... No! A girl shark. Look over there. But how do we know it's a girl shark? Is this what they call work? I'm afraid so, my dear. Good. It's about time we learned how the other half live. <laughs> uh, row, lovey. Oh, I can't row anymore. My hands ache, my arms ache, even my aches ache. Oh. When I get back to the farm, I'm going to have to milk the cow standing up. How about it, Professor? Are we making any progress? Well, we've been rowing for over two days. And as near as I can tell, we've... Uh, Completed a circle. A circle? You mean we're right back where we started from? Exactly. I thought those waves looked familiar. Uh, Captain, uh, can you give me one good reason why you haven't hoisted our sail? Yes, Mr. Howe, we don't have a sail. Can you give me another good reason? Mr. Howe, we can't even make a sail. All we've got are the clothes on our backs. I'll donate my dress to make a sail. Yes, and I'll donate my shirt. Skipper, why don't you donate your pants? We can fill them with air and fly to Hawaii. Very funny. Thurston, I think it's time we made the supreme sacrifice. You're right, my dear. You have permission to use the Howell clothes. Run up my dinner jacket. <laughs> I see you girls are getting into shape. Yes. When I get back to the farm, there's going to be a lot of work to do. I have to build up my stamina, too. Is backing that strenuous? No, but some producers are. Darling, what's the first thing you plan to do when we arrive in civilization? Kiss Wall Street. <laughs> I just want to get home. Home, sweet home. And I know exactly what I'm going to do the first day. What is that, my dear? Count the servants. They haven't been paid in 15 years. Some of them may have left. Well, in that case, good riddance. One thing I can't stand is disloyalty. <laughs> Skipper, then I know what you're thinking about. <laughs> That's what I thought. You've got about 15 minutes before you relieve Gillian on watch. Thanks, Professor. That's just enough time for me to go through my list of girlfriends again. <laughs> Boy, after nothing but coconuts and bananas for days and days, everybody's gonna be so surprised when they have fresh fish for dinner. Mmm, mm, boy, broiled snapper. Everybody's gonna be so happy. <laughs> 
Buddy, I got some good news. You spotted a rescue boat. No, that'd be great news. All I got is good news. Hey, we're having broiled snapper for dinner. Broiled? Uh-huh. How are you cooking it? With a fire. With a fire? Where did you build a fire? On the deck. On the deck? <laughs> idiotic, thoughtless things that you've ever done. Well, I was only trying to cook the fish. But, yeah, you, you almost cooked us. That would have been the end of the rescue. <laughs> I can't believe it. After 15 years, we're finally rescued. Rescued? Rescued? Rescued. 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 Hey, 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 down here! Hey, down here! Hey! <laughs> Ahoy down there! The Coast Guard cutter is on the way. Good thinking, folks. Starting that fire saved your lives. We never would have seen you without that smoke. I'll stay with you until the cutter arrives. If you're okay, wave. Wave! And we're clear! Thanks for doing it. I knew you could do it, little buddy. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is Marshall Rogers, KBEX Hawaii, and this is one of the most exciting moments in the history of the Honolulu Yacht Harbor. on a tiny, unchartered island somewhere in the Pacific, the seven castaways have finally been rescued, and they're on their way back to civilization. to welcome the passengers and crew of the ill-fated minnow shipwrecked so long ago. Here they come into the marina now, rescued in the very huts in which they lived on the island. to greet them. Welcome to Honolulu and the USA.
photographers are swarming all over the place trying to get a glimpse of the happy group missing for so many years. And look at that mob waving and cheering. to say aloha to the long-lost castaways. present you with the key to the city. Oh, must open some big door, huh? <laughs> the entire world was thrilled when the Coast Guard radioed word of your rescue after 15 years. Telegrams and calls have been pouring in. But I'd like to present you with the most important one first. Now, this telegram is from Jimmy Carter. Jimmy who? Jimmy Carter. He's the president now. Huh? He succeeded Ford. Ford who? Gerald Ford. He came after Watergate. Watergate who? Oh, I'm afraid we've been away a long time. Yes, it seems that everything has changed. <laughs> I'm certainly glad that some things haven't changed. Oh, and sure beats getting lost. <laughs> Capitalist parade for a stupid cast of face. Delighted that you have finally been rescued. Well, we're delighted to be back. Oh, yeah, 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 great. Sure. Yeah. Everyone is fascinated that you were rescued by a tidal wave. Well, actually, it was this disc that saved us. Our barometer hadn't worked for years. So Gilligan found this strange-looking disc in the water at the edge of the lagoon. We have no idea where it came from. Get, get a close up of the disc. It seems to have properties of an alloy that uh, I'm unable to identify. And due to the increased conductivity of this disc, I was able to adapt my crude barometer and predict the tidal wave. It's possible? Yes. It's a recording disc from spy satellite. Must notify Chief of Secret Police immediately. You stay. Find out what you can. And so this disc turned out to be a truly good luck charm. That's why the rest of us decided that Gilligan should keep it. And I'll never take it off, ever. 
You're all back here in civilization. What happens now? Well, the fact is, later on, uh, we're going to all get together for a great big Christmas reunion on my new boat. But for the present, I guess we're all going our own separate ways. Yes, I, I think we're all going our own separate ways. A person, our separate ways. Oh, not you and me, Lobby. I'm just a figure of speech. <laughs> Yes, and I'll be taking this profile back to all of my friends. I'm going back to the farm and to Herbert, my fiancé. And I to my Bunsen burners and test tubes. I guess we're all just going our separate ways. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Thank you. Nice to see you. That's very good, Gilligan. Now, why don't you go topside and start working? That way you won't bother me anymore. Aye, aye, sir. Thanks a lot, Gilligan. Now, get topside. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye. Oh. Just think, Gilligan. The check comes from the insurance company today. Then we can pay off the balance, and the minute two is ours. Ours? Well, can I have a little teeny weeny piece? Okay, you can have a little teeny weeny piece. Thank you, partner. Partner? Just keep working up there. We've got to be ready for the start of the charter season. Aye, aye, sir. Just think what we missed during the past 15 years. Three different presidents, astronauts walking on the moon, and miniskirts. We even missed the miniskirts. What are miniskirts? Remember when we left? Women's skirts were clear down to here. While we were gone, they came up to here. Now they're back down to here again. Killing did we miss from here to here? Top my paintbrush. Why don't you stop varnishing and come down from there and go get the morning mail? Maybe the check from the insurance company will arrive today. And then the minnow two will be all mine. <laughs> I'll go get the mail. I do hope that check gets here today. <laughs> we'll be sitting on top of the world. <laughs> You didn't. I mean, no, you wouldn't. Bet I did. What is dumber than varnishing the seat of a chair? Sitting in a chair that's just been varnished. Gilligan, get me out of this. <laughs> Gilligan, go get the mail, because if I see you in my sight, I'll... Look, it comes now. I do talking. Why should you do talking? Idiot, because you have accent. You are sailor? Yeah, I'm first mate in the middle, too, and a very teeny little partner, too. We are sailors also. Uh, both of us. Nice necklace you're wearing. It's my good luck charm. In my country, it's old custom. I give you my good luck charm for your good luck charm. Huh? Solid gold. No, I wouldn't part with this for my life. Every man have price. Well, I gotta go. Faith, no, I gotta check about a check. 
Skipper, I got it, I got it. Last. It was in the mail. Well, give me the letter. You know, it was in a big sack of mail, and mailman made me wait, you know. Will you give me the letter? Oh, yeah. There it is, a good old check for the good old minnow, too, huh? <laughs> No check in them. Why not? Why not? Why not? Even you could understand that. It's written in English. It's as plain as a nose on your face. All the whys and wherefores. Can't you understand that? I can get past you, sir. Gilligan, it says here that the insurance company will not pay me until I can prove that the shipwreck was not my fault. Don't they trust you? Well, Gilligan, it's not like we were back on the island where we all trusted each other. We're back in civilization. Dog eat dog. It was never dog eat dog on the island, except for Fifi, and she wasn't even there. Right. Well, at any rate, I can't collect my money until I can get everyone who was on board to sign this affidavit and swear that the accident was not my fault. Now, you're going to be the first one. Here's a pen. I'm going to sit right here. You use my knee to write on and sign that, Gilligan. <sighs> Gilligan! Skipper, you got to stop sitting in chairs that already been varnished. Would you get away from me I before I varnish you? Why we roll out the bell? We now kill it down with this. Then we take this. Good idea. <laughs> Come on, baby, that's not fair. Fair? Is that what you said, Tony, fair? What's fair about a part-time love? What's fair about promises you don't keep? What's fair about lies? Lies? Goodbye, Tony. You've got to be kidding. I said goodbye. You, you really mean it. Ciao. You'll be calling me, baby. You'll be calling me. That's what I said, J.J., lousy, just plain lousy. Would you like to elaborate on that, Mr. Producer? Darling, I wouldn't ask him that. Well... Who picked out that ridiculous dress you're wearing? I did. I want to see less material and more you. Well, what do you want me to wear? A Band-Aid? Would you? Where's that costume he picked out for the scene? I've got it right here. Would you let your wife wear this? Which wife? Your daughter? Now that's hitting below the belt. Well, that's the problem. There's nothing below the belt or above it. J.J., we've got the whole crew waiting. Why don't we skip to the shower scene? I'm sorry. No shower scene. Okay, okay. Make it a bath. I'm not going to do a nude scene. Who said nude? Let her have a cake of soap. Soap, Sam. No way. And a washcloth. Washcloth, Sam. You can use the washcloth and the soap on the script. It's filthy. You were on that island too long. This, this is modern writing, as modern as today's newspaper. Then use it to wrap fish. I'm paying you a fortune to make this picture, and you'll make it my way. Well, if you want it your way, you wear it. You're 
the director. Get her back on the set. Oh, right, 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 right. Ginger, are you decent? Of course. That's why I'm having all this trouble. Uh. The producer is ordering you back on the set. What's your answer? <laughs> Pardon us, sir. Uh, we're looking for a friend. I'm a producer. I don't have any friends. Do you know Ginger Grant? Yeah, she kind of looks like this. With all those clothes on, how can anyone tell? Your friend is in her dressing room. Let's go see what's going on with Ginger. And get her to sign the insurance paper so we can get the money for the boat. Now, let's not be selfish, Gilligan. First her problem, and then the insurance paper. Right. First her problem, second the insurance paper. That's right. Ginger, it's the skipper. And Gilligan. Skipper! <laughs> <laughs> Gilligan! <Yeah. laughs> first, what's your problem, Ginger? Second, will you sign the insurance yeah, papers? Uh, Gilligan. Which yeah, I said, first, we'll ask her what the okay, problem Okay, okay. Now, what's wrong, Ginger? Well, this is what's wrong. I've never read anything so terrible. It's full of four-letter words. Oh, yeah? She's right, Skipper. You can't imagine how many four-letter words. When, this, from, both, like, all four-letter words. Where? Uh, that's a five-letter word. Mm -hmm. Gilligan, I don't think that those words are what are bothering her. There's a lot of words in here. I don't even understand what they mean. Look at this one here. It starts with yeah, a... Never uh... mind, Gilligan. Skipper. Things have changed so much while we were on the island. They used to make beautiful movies with beautiful costumes. Ginger, you'd look good in anything. But they think I'd look better in nothing. Nothing? Nothing but a smile. Oh, a big smile or a small smile? What difference does it make? Well, if it's a really big Get smile, you never... Never mind. I guess that producer figures that's the only way to make money. Pictures with dirty words and no clothes. Well, maybe he's right. I've seen a lot of movies since we've been rescued. I saw Star Wars. They have little spaceships with red lights and blinking green lights, and they have this big fight. And how about the robot, R2-D2? Well, there's nothing dirty in that. R2-D2 is a four-letter word. Gilligan, there was no nudity or dirty words in Star Wars. How about Jaws, a big shark going around? <laughs> nothing dirty about that picture, either. How about Julia? No nudes, no dirty words. They must have lost a lot of money. Gilligan, they made hundreds of millions. Am I intruding? Yes. We're the friend of Ginger's from the island. First, we have to find out what her problem is. Second, we're going to have her sign the paper. Hey, Gilligan, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's been a little misunderstanding. Now, who told you I wanted you to do a nude scene and those dirty words in the script? You did. I was joking. <laughs> These actresses, they can never take a joke. <laughs> I wouldn't make a picture I couldn't take my mother to see. Ready when you are, Ginger. I don't know how you two did it, but then I never did understand how you did anything anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you wanted me to sign something, didn't you? Oh, yes, Ginger. Uh, the, the insurance company. Oh, you see, I'll I... sign anything. I love you two guys. <laughs> Skipper, love's a four-letter word. What's wrong with that? Nothing, little buddy. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> yes, Chief. We understand need for urgency. We have subject under surveillance, and we have disc very soon. <laughs> You all right, partner? Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Please forgive Fred, but we have part in cowboy pictures. Practice throwing rope. <laughs> Can we get it off me, please? Over here. Yeah. You tie him up, take this. Kill again!
you shouldn't rush in on me like that. Well, we kept on knocking, but you didn't answer. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm very busy. You'll have to come back some other time. Oh. No, we have to talk to you now. You've just been elected homecoming king for the big game. Yes. We even have a special cheer for you. Come on, girl. Yeah. I'm in the middle of an experiment. But don't you like the cheer? Well, yes, it's very clever, but I have no time for these things. Oh, please, you've got to be the homecoming king. Besides, I thought you girls always elected a romantic figure as homecoming king. How about a movie star? Like, uh, Tab Hunter. Oh, no, you're kidding! You were on that island a long time. You're a romantic figure now, Professor. Missing all those years on some mysterious tropical island. You've got every girl in school turned on. Turned on? Oh, he's so macho! Macho? <laughs> Come on, let's do the cheer again. No, no, please, girls, I have work to do. Da -da 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 -da. Hey! Rickety rat, rickety rat, where's the heart of the fancy back? Rickety rat, rickety rat, we're now we're letting go again! Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, I will be the homecoming king. Now, please, please, let me get back to my work. Who is it? Miss Ainsworth. Oh, come in, Miss Ainsworth. Come in. Ah, oh, it is good to see a mature, intelligent woman. Oh, well, thank you, Professor. I have been interrupted all day long by young, impulsive females who do not understand the importance of scientific work. I understand, Professor. My anthropology department is also engaged in scientific study. Uh, may I say, Miss Ainsworth, that your research is very well known. Very well known indeed. Uh, currently, I'm preparing a study on tribal customs in remote parts of the world. Oh, like the natives we sometimes encountered from nearby islands. Exactly. Perhaps you could tell me something about their tribal customs. Um, for example, their courtship rituals? Anything unusual? Oh, indeed. A significant part of the courtship procedure involved sharing coconut milk through a common straw. I believe that crude straw was called a watubi. Oh, fascinating. And so different from courtship in this country, mm. where two people kiss. Like this. Please, Miss Ainsworth, I have work to do. So have I. Oh, Miss Ainsworth, turn off your macho. I wonder what the professor's inventing now. Oh. Uh. Good morning, gentlemen. <laughs> I am constantly interrupted. Women have become so aggressive since we were on the island. Ain't that a shame? <laughs> well, anyway, gentlemen, I'm, I'm delighted to see you again. Now, what was that insurance problem you phoned about? Ah, oh, Professor, is that one of your experiments? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, but it starts over there, Gilligan. Oh, wow, Professor, look at all this stuff. I mean, how do you do all that? Gilligan! Sorry, Professor. Oh, that's all right, Gilligan. That's not part of my experiment. You see, I was expecting you today, so I set that up especially for you. Well, thanks, Professor. I really must get back to my work. I've isolated a new organic polymer, a heavy plastic that's impervious to weather and virtually indestructible. Right now, I'm trying to think of a good use for it. Here's what it looks like. <laughs> Say, perhaps it would make a good toy. Say, perhaps you can call it a Frisbee. Frisbee? Why Frisbee? Because that's its name. I don't like to tell you this, Professor, but really, this has been on the market for quite a while. Yeah, well, that's what comes from being on the island all those years. <laughs> Last week, I invented the electric toothbrush. The week before, pantyhose. Why don't you invent something that hasn't been invented before? Gilligan, he knows that already. Only an idiot would invent something that's already been invented. Well, I'm sorry, Professor, but right, I'm trying Skipper. to... In my anxiety to create the things I dreamed about on the island, I failed to recognize that some of them might have been created in my absence. For example, huh, the skateboard. So I found out. And I thought I was going to revolutionize the furniture moving industry. Do you mind if I try it? Well, help yourself, Gilligan. Now, Skipper, about that insurance paper. Yes, Professor, I, I need your signature. I've got a paper here for you to read. 
Ah, yes. Hmm. Of all people, one of the most brilliant men in the country. Thank you, but who is he? Gilligan, the professor was talking about him. I'm sorry, Dean. Uh, these are my good friends, the skipper and Gilligan. How do you do, sir? How do you do, sir? We were all shipwrecked together on the island. You spent 15 years with him? Yes, sir. When the professor first met me, I was a young, stupid kid. He's made me what I am today. Gilligan, why don't we leave these gentlemen alone? I'm sure they've got important matters to talk over. Academic paraphernalia. As a matter of fact, I've been trying to meet with you for a month, Professor. Well, I'm sorry about that, Dean, but I've been terribly, terribly busy. Gilligan, why don't we take a walk around the campus? Oh, well, that's a good idea, Skipper. I'll see you later. Come yeah, on. Nice to have bumped into you. <clears throat> Come on. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Professor, I'm afraid you've been neglecting your primary duty. Oh, but I've taught all my classes and I've been Do hard at work on my Do you know how many alumni meetings and foundations had you booked for speaking engagements? I'm sorry, Dean, but Professor, I've been... Professor, you this... are a celebrity. Those people who hear you speak will donate money to the college. That's public relations work. Exactly. You can make this the biggest school on the West Coast. Oh, but we're on the East Coast. That's how big I want it to be. Understand? Big is not necessarily better, Dean. My boy. Let's sit down and discuss this on an equal basis. Boss to employee. Ah, fellow classmates, no? No. We're just visiting an old friend. Uh, we are exchange students. Exchange students? Yeah, we exchange this for this. Uh, no, thanks. Looks like a lot of money, little buddy. I don't care. My good luck charm's not for sale. Sorry, Jess. Come on, Gilligan. Don't worry. We get them later when they come out. Hi, Dean. Oh. Sure have a beautiful campus. <laughs> He's not very polite. Well. Hi, Professor. Hi, Gilligan. What's the problem, Professor? Oh, they want to use me to sweet talk the alumni, make speeches, and be in parades. They don't care about my students, my research, my ideas. Well, I know back on the island, we cared about your research. We didn't understand it, but we cared about it. Yeah, and we cared about each other, too. I mean, you cared about the Howells. Howells cared about Ginger. Ginger cared about Marianne. Marianne cared oh, about on, me. Gilligan, we, we know who all was on the island. No, 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 but Gilligan is right. I mean, we always tried to help each other. And I'll be happy to help you out now, Skipper. Hey, may I say your insurance company is vindictive and ruthless? No, it's Pacific and Western. Gilligan, let the man sign the paper. Oh, thanks a lot, Professor. And don't forget, we'll see you on the boat at Christmas time. Remembering plan. When they come out of building, we stop skinny one. You stop him, ask question. While you are talking, I hit him overhead with this. <laughs> Good idea. While he is down, we get this. <laughs> we get this, we are heroes. <laughs> Look, they come out different door. Quick, we take shortcut in field. No, Chief, not yet. I bump into problem. Ivan, problem bump into him. But not to worry. We have disc very soon. Wherever skinny one goes, Ivan and Dimitri will follow. Excellent vintage, Howell. Must have been a good year. 1492. I forget whether it came over on the Nina, the Pinto, or the Santa Maria. <laughs> Justin, darling. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen, my wife. A splendid idea, that intercom. Well, the long distance. You see, at first we considered carrier pitches, and then for obvious reasons we <laughs> reconsidered. <laughs> yes, lovey, what is it? I think the ladies would like an after dinner mint. Would they like the mint in San Francisco or the one in Philadelphia? 
<laughs> That's my Thurston. <laughs> in spite of your shipwreck, Thurston, you seem in good shape. Oh, I'm fit as a fiddle. Stradivarius, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Have a cigar, Thurston. Uh, domestic, I'm afraid. Uh, domestic? Oh, please. Uh, Phillips, where are our cigars from Havana? Oh, one moment, sir. Yes. Just arriving, sir. Uh, thank you, Phillips. Uh, meanwhile, gentlemen, I, I think we can discuss that little uh, business proposition you had in mind. Ah, yes. We have decided to issue a million shares of preferred stock and a million shares of common. Make that two million preferred. There's nothing common about a Howell Enterprise. <laughs> little financial joke. <laughs> Thank you, Fidel. We were considering your investment in the neighborhood of 100 million. Well, I'm afraid I don't know anything about that neighborhood. You see, I, I never go slumming. My darling, without your leadership, there was no social season. No. Without you on the symphony committee, the musical seasons were a disaster. Oh, you're so flattering. Oh, and the ballet. Without dear lovey, Swan Lake turned into disco duck. Oh, I promise you, now that I'm back, everything will be different. Oh, definitely. And I certainly hope you ask Mr. Howell for some financial assistance. Oh, I'll try. But sometimes Thurston treats me like a child. When I want to talk about money, he says, Oh, go play with your blocks. Your blocks? Yes. 42nd Street, 43rd Street, 44th Street, 40... Yes? Uh, we're Gilligan and the Skipper. Oh, yes, from the island. I'm Gilligan. He was in charge of the shipwreck. Uh, uh, Gilligan. Now, I hope we're not intruding. Mr. Howell wasn't expecting us. Oh, I'm certain he'd be delighted to see you. Thank you. So I said, now mind you, this is the funny part. You can't park it here. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Mr. Skipper and Mr. Gilligan, to see Mr. and Mrs. Thurston Howell the third. Oh, Thurston. Gilligan. Captain! Oh. That's the most amazing Dear, dear, dear. Oh, Mrs. Howell. Why Howell. didn't you call ahead? So well, well, we would have called Mrs. Howell, but your phone number is unlisted. Uh -huh. Tell us your house. Uh, sorry, we didn't know you were having a party. We would have... Uh, oh, you must stay and have dinner with us. Oh, well, thank you. No, we're really not hungry. <laughs> no, we're just starved. Uh, folks, I want you to meet some very dear and old friends of ours. They were on the island with us. Yes, this is uh, the captain, and uh, this is Gilligan. Uh, this is uh, M Mr. Devonshire, Mrs. Devonshire, uh, Mr. Fellows, and Mrs. Fellows. Oh, <laughs> do stay and dine with us. No, actually, we have some private business to talk over. It, it can wait, though. No nonsense! Of course it can. We'll just be a, a second, folks. A step into the library. Oh, thank you, you, Mr. Stark. Excuse <laughs> us. <laughs> yes, it's down one of the halls. After you, go. We'll see you later. Yes, of course. Old and dear friends. Aren't we fortunate, darling? Never to have been shipwrecked. Mr. Howell, the insurance company has to pay me for Minnow 1 before I can pay for Minnow 2. Oh, dear. We didn't know that you needed money. Well, why didn't you ask me? I, I feel hurt, deeply hurt. Grateful, perhaps, but, but hurt. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mr. Howell. But that's my problem. Now, if you'll just sign here. Uh, anything that you want, Captain. There you are. I don't believe it. I <laughs> love you. You forgot to turn off the intercom. Oh. Imagine being shipped. Which one of us is Rip and which one is Raph? To subject us to even meeting those two boas. First, and those people are insulting the Skipper and Gilligan. That is despicable. I refuse to do business with people of such ilk. Well, it doesn't bother us. Well, Mr. it Howell. bothers us. Well, I want them out of my house. And off my land. It took them two weeks to go down the driveway. We heard everything you said. The deal is off. Nobody shames my friends. Throw them out. Don't even validate their parking tickets. This way, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Chief. Come along, my dear. Let's go. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you think of it just a little unreasonable, Mr. Howell? Mr. Howell is never unreasonable. Who are you? We are with them. Then you're out, too. Oh, Get out of the way.
Mary Ann. You look wonderful. <laughs> well, I, I feel wonderful, Cindy. Not nervous, are you? No. Why should I be nervous? It's traditional. All brides are nervous. I'm not. See? Marianne, we've been best friends since we were kids. What's going on? Well, uh, Her Herbert loves me. And he's waited 15 years to marry me. The whole time I was on the island. What are you trying to say? Oh, Cindy, he's changed. I've changed. Nothing's the same anymore. Oh, I don't love him. Then you shouldn't marry him. Cindy, he's waited 15 years. Marianne, you're making a mistake. No. No, I am going through with this no matter what happens. Oh, Cindy, and I don't want you to tell anybody what I've just told you. But Marianne... nobody. Never, ever. Promise? Remember? Like when we were kids? Right. Oh, now, we don't have much time. Now, see if you can put yourself together. Oh. oh, there are two men outside who say they're your old friends. But you know all of my old friends. Not these two. One of them, well, so far he's knocked down the bridal bower, two rows of chairs, flower arrangement. Gilligan? That's his name, and the other one is, um... Skipper. Do I send them away? Do I send no. Them away? No, but just give me a couple of minutes, okay? Right. You're wrecking her train. As you can see, our little buddy is still his same old self. How did you find out about the wedding? Well, actually, we didn't. We came here to get your signature on a piece of paper. First, we have to get the paper oh, signed. Oh, I was going to surprise everybody at the Christmas party with my new husband. Just think, Gilligan, Marianne waited 15 years for this day. And Herbert Rucker's waited 15 years. That is 30 years. <laughs> Oh, isn't 15 and 15 30? Yes, but I don't know how you do it. You always say the wrong thing. Marianne, did I say the wrong thing? No, I'm the happiest girl in the whole world. I'm just a little nervous. Well, but that's natural. No, but... she, she, she's happy. Why is she crying? I always laugh when I'm happy. Because you're not a bride. Oh, I am just so happy you could be here to see how happy I am on the happiest day of my life. She's any happy, she's going to drown herself. Oh, girl. Especially after 15 years, and he waited 15 years. That makes 30 years. <laughs> Gilligan, would you cut that out? Hey, what's wrong with saying 30 years? Well, the judge says it. <laughs> yes. Are you ready, Dad? Yes. No. Is it yes or no? We're ready. She's not. Just give us a couple of minutes, Sydney. Will you both please stay for the wedding? It would be our pleasure. Yeah, after 15 years, you got... <laughs> oh, I didn't mean it. Gilligan, let's get out of here. Marry <laughs> Right there on the island, try not to trip the bride. But pardon me. Miss, why are you crying? You're not getting married. That's why I'm crying. Marianne's crying because she's getting married. You're crying because you're not getting married. Skipper? What? I don't know whether to throw rice or hankies. Just sit there and be quiet, Gilligan. Pardon me. You are friend of bride or groom? Of the bride. You bring presents? No, I didn't know it was going to be a wedding. It's never too late to give presents. Sure it is. Necklace would be wonderful presents. Where would I buy a necklace now? It's best to give something you own. Like old saying. A something old, something new, something borrowed right from you. Give it Now, try to understand, little buddy. Cindy's in love with Herbert. That's why she's crying. 
And Herbert's in love with Cindy. Well, Herbert's in love with Cindy, and Cindy's in love with Herbert, and Marianne is in love... Who'd you say Marianne's in love with? Nobody, but that's the point. But Marianne's marrying Herbert anyway. Why? Because he waited 15 years for her, and she waited 15 years for him. <laughs> oh, no, now she's doing it. You better stop saying 15 years. Killigan, it's up to us to straighten out this whole mix-up. Oh, I don't think we can. Why not? I think it's too late. Excuse us. Come on, Gilligan. And do you, Herbert, take this woman, Mary Ann, to love, honor, cherish, and hold forever and ever as your lawful wedded wife? Hey, little buddy, are you sure you know what to do? Don't worry about me. Move it out. You, Mary Ann, take Herbert to love, honor, cherish, and hold forever and ever. Cindy and Cindy's in love with Herbert. I should have had the good sense to figure that out by myself. I think we better stop talking and start doing something. Skipper, let's go. Move it out. Take shortcut through field. Good idea. Because his wife won't let him. <laughs> we did it! We did it, little sweetheart! Gilligan! We're ready to get underway. Cast off. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, you're stepping in my hand, young man. Please get up and be quiet. You have swamping divan. Oh, I know what you want. A big box of money Mr. Howell gave me. I'll go get it for you. Okay? Hold it! Everyone, please, putting hands in air. He means put your hands up. We all know what he means, Gilligan. They want my box of money, Skipper. You gentlemen want your own boxes of money? Uh, what denominations do you prefer? I'm not interested in money. Good heavens, they must be madmen. We take what we want. 
Wait a minute, that's my good luck charm. <laughs> Lucky for us. <laughs> we give that to our government. We get metal. Hold it. I'll take that. FBI. Oh, good. If you folks don't mind, we'll take these two along with us. Will somebody tell us what this is all about? Can I have my good luck charm back? In due time. Uh, thanks to you, we captured these spies. I want you to know that the government is greatly in your debt. Why not? The government's greatly in debt to everyone else, too. Let's go. Okay, heroes, get ready to cast off. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, little buddy, I'll come and get you. Hang on. <laughs> oh. I can't understand it, Gilligan. Understand what, Skipper? Well, I set our course for that little island just off the coast. Right. Well, it's been hours now. We seem to be heading straight out to sea. Unless the compass is wrong. The compass can't be wrong. I just cleaned it before we left. You cleaned it? Yeah, it's a good thing I did. It was really dirty when I got in there. There was a little piece of metal jammed in the bottom. I took it out there and threw it away, and I called it the copper. Oh, Gilligan, that was the magnet. That's what controls the needle that I steer by. Gilligan. Well, we better not take any chances. I better start heading back. Aye, aye, sir. I'll steer by the sun for a while. Circle the storm. We we'll go west until. Batten down the hatches. Batten down the hatches. Send down an SOS. Send down an SOS. How do you spell that? Watch out! Mm -hmm. Harm, Skipper. Neither did the iceberg that sank the Titanic. Uh, any idea where we are? Not really. That storm turned us round and round and blew us all over the map for 12 days. But, but, but surely we must be someplace. If we weren't, we wouldn't be here. Uh, that's my lobby's long suit. <laughs> Logic. Yes. Well, wherever we are, thanks to your expert seamanship, Skipper, we're all alive. Hey. I know where we are. Now, how could you know that, Gilligan? That wind was blowing 90 miles an hour in every direction. But I know, Skipper. How do you know, Gilligan? Look what I found. Oh, no! The same island. <laughs> Why are you all so sad? I mean, we're home again, huh? Yes, Gilligan. We're home again. Yeah. Now, this is the tale of our cats who wait their ear for a long, long time. They'll have to make the best of things. It's an up to Skipper too will do their very best to make the others comfortable in the cockpit island nest. 
no phone, no light. The motor car's not a single luxury. Like Robinson Crusoe, it's primitive as can be. So join us here each week, my friends. You're sure to get a smile from seven stranded castaways here on Gilligan's Island.